Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. Uh, there we go. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show, um, whatever you want to call us. Uh, we're here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, we do record our shows, however, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and watch any of our previous recordings for all our shows going back to the very beginning, which was January 2009 when we started this. Yeah, wow. Six years? Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, interviews, mini training sessions, book reviews, um, basically anything library related, we are um, happy to have it on the show. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and do shows, and we sometimes have guest speakers that come on. And this week we have a mixture of that. Um, this week we have a theme, sort of. <laughs> it's April Fool's Day. Happy April Fool's Day. Hopefully nobody's doing anything horrible to you today. It's horrible. <laughs> Hopefully we're not doing anything to you for it. Well, I don't know. I was just tossed this. Um, Lisa Kelly is here <laughs> next to me here from the Library Commission. And she tossed this idea out of um, a different type of book club presentation, um, uh, how to do the worst one ever. If you want to have a horrible book club and never, ever do them ever again, this is the way this, we're going to teach you how to do that. Get you right up to speed with that. So I'll just hand over to you, Lisa. You can take it away. You can do yourself and what you're doing. Okay. Um, you should be able to either use the mouse or the keyboard, whichever. As far as forward, right? It should be, yeah. Okay. And actually, make sure it's on there. Yeah. All right. Good morning. My name is Lisa Kelly, and these two lovely ladies next to me are not only friends, but they are in my book club. And we, I will let everyone introduce themselves. So I will say I have been at the Library Commission for some years and have been in um, several different book group discussions, some organized, some on the fly, some for one book, one Lincoln. And from these discussions, we are here to give you counsel on how to get rid of your book group, <laughs> how to never be asked back again. And you can use all of these tips and tricks in tandem, singularly, over and over again, and you will thank us. These, will, these are guaranteed to work. I <laughs> so I'm going to let Siri introduce herself. Uh, my name is Sarah Daniels. I'm a retired librarian. Happy. I'm my dad. Uh, I spent 12 years at a middle school library in Wisconsin. Then we moved to Nebraska. Good thing. Spent six years as a, as a librarian at Dell College. And then spent my last 15 years at Klein Williams Law Firm. I am in, as she said, that this wonderful book group. I have been in one other. And so I feel very qualified to talk about this. They, I hope I didn't kill that book group, but they <laughs> killed my participation in it. So I would be happy to be here. <laughs> and you uh, learned from them. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Vicki Wood, and I um, am the Youth Services Supervisor for Lincoln City Libraries, where I've been for um, about 20 years, like you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. um, I, one part of my job when we used to have book groups was to train the book group leaders for the book groups of kids, and so a lot of the um, experiences I've had are about parent-child book groups, but I've also been in several book groups myself. I'm very happy in the one I'm in right now. You're in three, though. Yes, I'm in three different book groups. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit that. <laughs> They're very different types of book groups. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, I know a little bit about this topic. So if this is on your to-do list in your library and you hate it and you don't want to do it, we are here for you today. <laughs> you won't have a book group, or if someone keeps bugging you to go to a book group and it's not your thing, we we are here to help. So just hang in there with us, and we'll give you surefire tips for this. So um, this has been the nemesis of organizations I've been in, not just book groups, but um, really just don't keep your act together. Do not do that. Do not keep spreadsheet. Do not keep a list. Don't keep email addresses. Uh, don't do any of these things. And be very haphazard about this. Um, has this happened in your book groups that you are no longer in? Or are you yeah, I was going to say, I was in a book group that changed the date a lot. So <laughs> um, it would be a certain date, and then and then two weeks before, they'd say, I can't do it at my house. Can someone else do it? And then if someone would say they could do it, and you'd think, OK, it's going to be there. And then three days before, you get another email saying, no, it's not really going to be there, and it's going to be next Sunday instead. And <laughs> that was awful. Yeah. It just yeah. didn't work. My other one was so disorganized, we didn't know who was going to lead it until we got there. <laughs> That works. 
Yeah. Did the person leading it know they were going to be leading it? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes you had a whole little bit of time ahead, like, oh, you're new. Why don't you lead it? It's kind of works. Make, a new, make a new person do it. I know. You've never through, been there before. That's what happened to me. Like that when yeah. You in. I walked in, they said, oh, how would you like to lead? Hi, who are you? <laughs> So you can see these really have value, these, these things we're telling you. Um, it's, yeah, I think the best thing is to, to have it be a consistent, like we do like the third Thursday or the, you know, every fourth yeah. Saturday or something that, so that people can actually remember it and right. don't move it around a lot because that just... Is, yeah. Um, but if you do want to get rid of your book group, you know, hide the date or don't tell yes, them what it is sure. and don't re-remind them or right. anything. So don't... Make sure you have bad email addresses yeah. too, so that no one finds out when they show up anyway. And you can say you email. Yeah. I emailed you. I was back, but I emailed you. Okay. Um, so certainly we all have different reading tastes. It goes without saying. And Nancy Pearl is the one who taught us uh, what we read for, if we read for setting or character or language or story. And it is really true that everyone has a different taste. Like, I would say a Myers-Briggs of reading. Do you want to read things again? Do you like genres? So it's important to find the one person who is really quirky and far out and eccentric, and then they should choose the books for your book group because then everyone will really struggle. Right. Dislike them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the interesting thing is they're usually the ones who want to choose. So you can do this easily. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll be bold. In fact, yeah. Those folks who read odd titles um, really want someone to discuss them with, not because they necessarily liked them, but because they're so perplexed by what they chose. <laughs> they want somebody to talk to about it. Yeah. I'm going to punish the rest of you. Yeah. Has this happened in your group? Oh, yeah. And, I, and I, you know, and a similar thing is to have somebody, <clears throat> the, just the boldest person or the most talkative person or the most dominant person choose the book every time because everybody else is passive and they're all like, I don't know. Know what to read then. The bold person comes in and says, "Let's read this," and everybody goes, oh, "Okay, you know." And yeah, that's really not a good way to do it. That goes along with being disorganized. Right. You get to the end of the night, yeah. and um, you'll say, "What's next?" Yeah, and everyone's tired or wants to leave, right. or if they have too much wine. And, just, <laughs> and like you say, somebody's really loud, and yeah. We had some, we had some rules about length of the book and if it was available at the library, but then nobody would would have a computer to look it up, and so then we would go, yeah, that sounds good, and then find out that there were no copies. Or... <laughs> so yeah, that, I, that's, that's, not, that's not a good way. That's not a good way. Right, um, and I have two sisters, and one person was allowed to, they, they're both in book groups in their respective towns, so I can reference my sister's book group, and you won't know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> And they took away the right to select from one person because ah, they just said, we didn't like your books, so you're not choosing anymore. So Ooh, did that person wow. stay in the book group? I don't believe so. Oh, wow. So there's lots of ways to handle this. Yeah. <laughs> so Maybe the person knew they were a bad selector. I don't know, but if you are branded, then, you know, so you keep this all in mind when you're trying to get rid of your book group. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're into. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, in a maybe in a well established book group, which is certainly not what we're trying to promote today, <laughs> no. um, you would have criteria. You might, and it, which it should be, I would hope it would be agreed upon by the group. What page number availability? Right. But a couple of times in current book group, old book group, chosen things that were just not out there because someone has a real passion for them or they found a copy at a little bookstore when they were traveling. And <laughs> yeah. um, well, even just our last selection, yeah. only had two copies at the library. I was on hold at the library hoping that I would get it before it was actually time to yeah. show up at book group. I also was in a book group where the, the attitude was kind of, well, if there isn't, just go buy it. Yeah. Okay. And some yeah. people do not want to buy books. Yeah. No. I would be that person. Yeah. I never want to buy a book. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's picked by the person that you know doesn't have your reading taste. <laughs> right. right. Well, and th this, is, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine because I think there's so many great books to choose and there's so many that have multiple copies or come in an e-book or a, an audio book yeah. or a downloadable format. And why can't you just choose that book? I mean, so... Yeah, it just takes a little bit of work um, on 
the ups, you know, before you compose the book. To do yeah. Some, Another do good some example book. of something that's not available would be maybe uh, something brand new. Right. It's only available in hardcover, right. so to buy it, it's going to be yeah. about 20 yeah. bucks, 30 bucks. And no library's going to lend it. Because they're all Because they they're, all lend, they're already, already booked yes, right. you know, on, on hold for a people. Or yeah. some libraries do have that right. rule where we will not lend anything outside of our own library for up to right. six months or something about um, that first month published. So pick something brand new that just came yeah. out like last week. Exactly. In fact, we have two 2014 copyrights coming up this mm -hmm. year. Someone just picked two brand new titles, but they were multiply available and in various formats. So that's something for you to decide what your criteria is, but by all means, don't have any criteria. Right. Just don't. But it kind of goes back like to that disorganized base. You know, <laughs> right. you, you don't, you're not planned ahead enough to know there aren't any. Right, right. And I was, I was actually in a book group that had a page limit, and I thought that was actually also a good guideline. I mean, there's great books that are 600 pages long or 500 pages long, but there's also really great books that are two or 300 pages long that you can actually read for your book group. So. And you chose a book for our book club that was multi, that was longer, but it was, it was about, it was a nonfiction selection on children. Right, and it was memories. very long. And Vicki said choose a couple of chapters. Right. So you can make it, again, we're telling you how things could work, and that's not really what we want. Right. But. <laughs> yeah, that book was daunting to read the whole thing, but if, if the goal is just to read a few chapters for discussion, then it yeah. worked out. Right. Yeah. My, my nonfiction was a lot that way, too. You wouldn't have to read it all because it was so specifically different. Which one was that? Each chapter. Signal the noise. Okay. Oh, because yes. each one was Make about, silver. yeah, makes over signal the noise. Each one was about a very different kind of mm -hmm. So if you weren't interested in baseball, don't read that chapter. Right. So you could make it flexible for your book group, right? If you wanted to make it if work. If you wanted. If you want to make it work, right. Yeah. Which we are saying you don't. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, I think any group of people with whom you're with, and it doesn't matter if you're discussing a book or if you're having dinner or at a family reunion, there's someone who has lots of opinions and certainly wants you all to know them. <laughs> so be that person. <laughs> Interrupt. Yeah. Interrupt. Yeah. Yeah, and be sure that, um, try to be tactless also. I think that's good. Yeah, tactless is good, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and make sure that you state how much you dislike the book at the beginning of the discussion, just so anybody who likes it then feels really intimidated. Yeah, just go ahead and announce right at the beginning, I hated this book. Right. That right. really promotes yeah. great mood for conversation. <laughs> I know the the Mott Caldecott committee and, uh, and the Caldecott committee have a rule that no one can say anything negative about a book when they're vetting the books until the end. Oh, um, you can only you can only talk about the positive things. That's and why so, they still have a group. Yeah, that's why they they're <laughs> so so works. just reverse that and you go. Yeah, yeah, and likewise, uh, I won't allow. I try not to allow any conversation about the book. So if Siri and I go to a movie or oh, something together, man. we will say, Oh, I finished. Oh, but, uh, That's know, all we're allowed. We're sort of cut it off right there, so we keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that way we're not sort of solving something in ahead of time, and it comes out in the group. And that's maybe too militant. I don't know how you feel about that, Vicki. Well, and one of the bottom lines about book groups is that when you talk about a book, it's not even about liking or disliking it. Yes. Right? It's about a whole bunch of other things. And if you start your discussion there, it's, your discussion's not going to go very far. Right. Yeah. Because liking it or disliking it, it's not really the bottom. It closes it down, right, mm -hmm. instead of opening it up. So um, by all means, start out the group by saying you hated the book. Okay. Um, you should definitely advertise, line up your guest speakers, and then try to get the book, because that's a recipe for great success in getting ready your club. Um, and I put the One Book, One Nebraska logo on here because that's – something my library supports in terms of checking out books. We buy multiple copies of what's been selected for the book to put state to read. And um, there's usually humanities council speakers or people who align themselves to be available as programs. So you know, buy, well, line them up and then call us and try to get your books. <laughs> yeah. And good luck. Yeah. Because that will not work. <laughs> <laughs> and there you'll have a speaker and no one will have read the book. You'll be high and dry. So, um, I hope you're getting what we're saying here. There's also one book, one Lincoln selections, right. and you make book club kits available, mm -hmm. multiple copies. So have you ever, or you also have book bags for schools as well. We do, and we also go out to book groups and lead discussions mm -hmm. on the one Lincoln, one book, one Lincoln selections. Right. So that's kind of a fun, mm -hmm. a fun thing to do also. Yeah. 
Um, right now, The Giver is still a really popular title, which has been around forever, but I think the movie and the resurging of, of that, you know, I was just, we just got asked this morning to check out books, you know, so be mindful of popularity. If it's really popular, just, just assume you're going to be able to get it. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you will not. Because you want it. Yeah. <laughs> Make it so. Make it so. <laughs> so yeah, if something has a movie tie-in or is a themed book, you just be really confident that you'll right. be able to get copies of it. And advertise and line it all up. Right. That's a great way to kill your then ask. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, this is just excellent. In fact, Vicki and I did an Encompass last year on um, how to uh, discuss a book when it doesn't have prepared discussion questions. So in our world here today, don't it doesn't matter. Don't read the book. Oh, you, you can talk about something else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Who says you have to talk about that book? Maybe you could just talk about the cover. You could. <laughs> or you or could the read. author, whether, yeah, you know. You author. could read half of it. Oh, or, and then say, nobody tell me how it ends. Oh, <laughs> yes, that will do it. Does it give you enough to sure. like, yeah. read yeah. sure. in there? Read some reviews. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Right. So um, if you're in charge of leading, and you actually know you're in charge of leading. Yes. Which in a disorganized group, you wouldn't necessarily right. know. So this might follow show up with no leader. Right. Show up with no preparation. So you're meeting at your appointed time. And would watching the movie instead of reading the book be oh. this too? And base all of your, all we your someone do evaluation of the book on how the movie was done? We actually had someone do that in my group once when we read Madame Bovary. She could not read it, and so she had like the, the movie and watched it. And we were like, no, not the thing. Well, so yeah, sometimes the ending is different. That's the oh, way. If they don't, you know, they, they can try to fake it. But, but she, when the she end is different, she watched the movie. The night that's before. good. <laughs> now I've done a book group where I deliberately assigned both the book and the movie. Oh, and well, then that would be Harrison. Yes, yeah, that's Farmer by Jim Harrison, and they were really oh. interesting. We did a comparison. I said, I don't care what order you view them, but you have to do both before you come back. So you know, but that's again an organized way to go about it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, we also had a situation where a woman selected the book, and then we were going to discuss it. And then she hadn't read the book then, but she had read one of her other books. Uh, see, so that's she talked about that the whole time. Yeah, I just talked about a different one. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like, <laughs> no, we're we and didn't then, read that one. <laughs> we read this one. And the really good thing about that is, and, you know, the other people that, they don't have to contribute that. No, because you're the only one who read the other exactly. one. Exactly. Uh, there you go. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, um, these are lessons from the <laughs> from real life. From the trenches. Oh, we've had This that. is probably one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, while it is a goal of mine, and I will say this, to have one conversation, it just never happens. Um, it never happens. I've never been successful at it in any gathering I've ever been in. It never stops bothering me. It never stops being my Achilles heel. The dreaded side conversation. So when you are asked to go to a book group and you're hating it, you know, talk to the person next to you. Talk loud. It's easy. Just lean on Right, right. right. And, yeah. and it doesn't really matter if it's about the book. No. In or fact, it, it actually, if it's about the book, it's almost more annoying because you're like, <laughs> why don't you bring it to the group so that everybody can talk about it instead of just telling the person sitting next to you. Right. Right. So, and, and especially if you know that there are other people who enjoy that, you should always sit next to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you can be troublemakers mm -hmm. all the time. You can make it hard for other people to hear. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they give up. So the yeah. leader might try to separate you. Mm -hmm. wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> the leader might try to put you in different places, but don't you fall for that. If you're an excellent sign talker, you keep it up. <laughs> you won't be able to figure because out. Because people will dislike you. They'll want to appreciate you coming to their gathering. And that's really what you want. You don't want to be liked. Everybody else will get tired of it. Yeah. yeah. Show up. Yeah. And they may not even really value your opinions anymore. Because you clearly don't want to share them with the group. You just want to share them with the person next to you. That's Well, and um, I have a friend who's in a, in a pretty serious book group. And one of the things they talk about is, uh, this is a term that her husband uses, anticipating each other's periods. So in other words, trying to figure out when somebody is going to stop talking <laughs> and not and waiting until that moment and then having a slight pause before you start talking. Wow. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's formalizing it a lot. 
<laughs> That's way too organized. Yeah. <laughs> so for those of you who are sign talkers out there, keep up the good work and right, keep going know. to book groups and keep doing what you do. That's easy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <laughs> well, and on the opposite side of things, um, you know, the body language at a book group can really tell a lot about your interest in the discussion and how much you really care to engage. So um, cross your arms, look down. Shut your eyes. Yeah, fall oh, that's asleep. A good one. I fall asleep. And if someone asked, asked you a direct question, you can always just say it was good or it wasn't good. <laughs> End of story. Uh, yeah. Answer short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, click the answers. You can sigh a lot also. <laughs> sigh Look at your watch. Look at your watch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Refill your wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> might result in talking, however. If you didn't like the book, you might just, yeah, this, you, you can only just say once, this book needed editing. Yes. Oh, that's good. It needed really good mm -hmm. editing. And that's all you need to say, really. You don't need to share why mm -hmm. or what you thought in addition to that. But don't contribute beyond that. Just, right. sit, just sit there. Simple declarative sentences with no. <laughs> Only when asked. <laughs> no explanation. But no, we, we actually had somebody in our book group who came continuously every week and never talked. Why would you come? And, well, that's what we thought. But clearly we thought, well, she must be getting something out of it. Or she wouldn't keep coming week after week. Maybe she just wanted to hear what everybody else had to say. I don't know, but but it was sort of it was sort of uncomfortable because you wanted everybody to participate, and she didn't. See, she seemed to want to come mm -hmm. and listen and not talk. No, on the serious side, we do have someone in our uh, who I observe like that, who you can tell is engaged though. They're not right. really, they're not speaking and they're not sharing, but they're actively following the conversation. Listening to what other people so, have to say. Um, you know, there's a way to do this right and there's a way to do this wrong. So if right. you don't want to be invited or make your other book club members feel uncomfortable, yeah, full on howdy behavior will do the trick. Well, and some people are mad when they don't like the book, and that, that also leads to how do behavior, or when they've stated that they don't like it and other people did, and they're just um, yes. baffled and don't want to say anything else, because how could you possibly have liked that book? You don't want to find out why. So just like it, yeah. <laughs> and of course, the best book discussions really come, in my opinion, from polarized opinions. Yep. Yep. If you can really capitalize on that. The road, like oh my yes, God, I think yes. for, for us was just one where we were all over the board. Oh, yeah. And if you can really capitalize on that and say, well, clearly you didn't like it, clearly you did like it. Right. Where's the middle? Right. Or a certain parts of it. Right, right. right. The interpretation of it. But yeah. if you're the leader, don't try to solve that. Don't oh. try to figure that out. Just just let people bash. Well, we when, <laughs> when I used to, um, to teach people about leading book groups with kids, we'd have this problem a lot, especially when there was a parent and a child, because the parent would tend to talk and the child wouldn't talk. Sometimes it was the opposite, but not very often. And so we had kind of specific questions where we directed those at the non-speaking people. And usually it turned out they had something to say, they just didn't know kind of how to jump in, or they didn't. And so um, so that's a job of a leader, too, is to kind of um, ask questions and try to draw people out. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, this one, oh. this is this is another favorite. Um, oh. Try to if you do share when you do decide that it's worth saying something, definitely don't make it about the book, right? <laughs> or in such a tangential way that there you cannot really connect A to B and stick with it, even when they try to bring you back on track. Yeah, as happened in our book group once. Yeah, <laughs> long time ago. Just there it was a book that happened to take place in Texas, and one of our members could not stop talking about growing up in Texas, being in Texas, wanting to go to Texas, whatever. <laughs> Every time we tried to bring it back to the actual book, it was hard. It was a book I picked that I really yes. loved, and it just derailed. It, 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 and it totally derailed. derailed. It's a perfect example of how to kill, because I tell you, I don't know if we ever did talk about the book. Yeah, and I was disappointed, and I thought, well, clearly I can't love a book too much when I bring it to the group, because it got one person singularly dashed that entire conversation. That's all it takes, people. One, yeah, person. one person. And actually, that person now started off by saying how much she didn't like the book. So you had two of, the, two oh, of those at the same whammy. time. Didn't like the book, and then could only talk about her experiences in growing up in Texas. And this book was written by a Pulitzer Prize winning author and crew. Oh. So, you know, we're not talking about slacker literature. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. There, it was worth discussing. We never really got to.
Yeah, this was this was definitely the death of one of my book groups, at least for me, because we would spend about ten minutes talking about the book, and then someone would bring up a political local political thing <laughs> or some restaurant they had eaten at. Oh yeah, there was no one. way. And then you were like, you know, they were looking at you like you were the Uber nerd, and you were going, okay, now what, let's talk about the book again. And they were gone. It was, there was no there was no hope to bring it back again. Now I should add a sidebar that one of my sister's book clubs. <laughs> um, it's perfectly acceptable to just talk about all kinds of yeah, things. In fact, it's a group. Just don't call it a book club. They it's, call well, it a coffee class or something. I think they do talk about the book, but they mm -hmm. allow. They're much more liberal. So when she hears about what I'm teaching, it sounds fairly rigid to right. her. So mm -hmm. they acknowledge, and they come together mm -hmm. and they acknowledge. We're going to talk about the book, and we're going to talk about a lot of other things. Right. So if that's your gig. Mm -hmm. This may seem like um, my mother's book group has morphed into that, but they actually changed the name of it. Now it's an official thing. It's their eating and reading group. Ah. Eating is the primary purpose. We're getting together, going out to dinner. But if we all have to read this book, we said we're going to read. Yeah, it. cool. Too. But it's yeah. not the main purpose. They put eating in front of reading. Right. And a lot of family members who have another family member in the book club know a book is just an excuse for that member to leave the house. <laughs> and they may not talk about the book. So I should add the caveat that right. maybe maybe your book club isn't designed to be as focused on the book. But if it is, it's a good idea to be off topic if you want to. Right. Bring it to its knees, close the discussion, and make it really not worth the time. So everyone who came and read the book doesn't get to talk about it. Right. And there's a difference between being talking about issues in the book that maybe kind of expand and don't relate directly, but still come from the book. Right. That's different than just going off and talking about right. some political <laughs> Exactly. And yeah, one of my three book groups is actually called the Margarita Book Group, and so there's no false advertising there. So it's really, <laughs> the group is really about margaritas, and not the books come second. But you know, as long as you know that going in, you're good. Do you talk about, what's the ratio of book to not book discussion in that group? Um, that's, a, that's a group where every other time we bring a book that other people haven't read. I mean, we bring our own, like, three mm -hmm. books that we've read just to share. Mm -hmm. um, and so we tend to talk a lot because each of us have a certain amount of time to talk about the pile of books mm -hmm. that we've brought that we think other people might be interested in. And I would say as far as the actual discussion goes, maybe we get maybe 20 minutes, you know, 30 before the margaritas hit. <laughs> Get, so we get distracted, you know, <laughs> by that. But no, it's we. It's not. It's not a, as serious as a book group as my other one. But I like it. Anyway. But you're exchanging. Here, here's three books that I read that I love, and then you all take notes and take them off. Right. Okay. And we, yeah, we make them available to each other. Sure. And, well, the key, is, like you said, is you know that going in. Exactly. Yeah. Right. We, we we don't have you know our expectations aren't. Maybe that's um, another one we need to add. You know, don't share your expectations for the book club. Right. Don't mm -hmm. don't properly define what it is so exactly. people don't know what they're getting into. Exactly. That's a good idea also because we're in book groups that clearly do. Right. Yes. Find their definitions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, oh. <laughs> that's very connected to the one we just. Yeah. <laughs> I I only recall one evening where that really happened in our group, and I'm. Um, happened in a group where we went probably an extra half an hour. Were you both there that night? I think so. I don't know. Um, yeah, you were. Locked it out. Apparently. Well, the issue, the book yielded some issue and somebody really went off the rails and man, they went on and not only did they go on, but they were angry. Really angry. And boy, they we were held captive by that person for right. quite some time. Right. So if you haven't been able to discuss something personal in your life, you could always use your book group for that. <laughs> you know, bring that up as a group. It. It's a relationship issue or something for which you, you can't discuss at home, so take that to your book group, I would right. say. Right. Use a convenient segue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And make others feel really know. uncomfortable about your personal yeah. issues. Yeah, share to my <laughs> Overshare. Yeah, yes. because you know, people in your book group aren't necessarily your friends. And they're your book group <laughs> friends, but those are good friends. And they certainly aren't being paid. Well, and to compare it to actual group therapy where you take the confidentiality of right. uh, group, book groups don't do that. Exactly. So what you share there might be gained. Right? Yeah. We're doing, we're sharing some things about our book groups, but have you had that happen in your other book groups? Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. 
And and as a matter of fact, what, when you're when you're working in parent child book groups, kids will often say things that their parents are mortified about. And that happened a lot because we tried to choose books that were a little chunky, you know, books that had some issues for the kids to talk about. And I know there have been situations where the parent was like, Oh, I can't believe we just said that. <laughs> but I don't think the child was seeking therapy, the child was um, being honest. But but in my adult book group there were also things where we you know, internally you're saying, I can't believe she just said that. I can't believe she just told us that. Um, so yeah, that, that happened. Yeah. And and now we should also add the other side. If you're really close friends and that is the confidentiality and the comfort that you have in there, right? Okay. But if that's not what the group is set up for, then by all means. Take your, book group, your book group could happen on your worst day ever. Yeah. And you could make a, make a point of going to your book group after you've just had your worst day ever. And in that case, there's a little venting. But but with, with our book group, the venting is built in because we have the, the meal before. Mm -hmm. So that's when you do all of your personal time. Mm -hmm. And then you make your transition mm -hmm. physical and otherwise yeah. into yeah. a space where it's about the book and not about the people. Yeah. Right. Someone did comment that the first rule of book club uh -huh. is you don't talk about book club. If that's the way you're going to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, well, yes. Do it. Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> or you don't, and you share everything you heard to everyone else you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I suppose it would follow that if someone shares something really personal in your book group, feel free to share that with everybody oh, else. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Outside of the group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, go ahead and deliver that to other people who might find that interesting. Did you know so-and-so shared this in book group? I just find that just ridiculous. Right. That would be good. Yeah, Because yeah. That, that will make that person feel really safe in your Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, now, in our particular book club, and everyone might select differently, but I make everyone, everyone, take turns selecting. And so it just stands to reason when you're asked, you should just refuse. Don't do yes. it. <laughs> I am so happy to find out that's an option. <laughs> I do not like selecting. Siri really hates it, and yet she always chooses really great books. She won't believe me when I say that. She'll I never believe best. me when I say that. <laughs> I make her choose. She does. And, um, you know, it, it follows that you should give people a good lead time. So yeah. if you want people to select, don't give them a lot of time. Just say, I need you to have a book by next week. Right. And yeah. you just tomorrow. organize. Yeah. Just, man, well, uh oh, your turn. Look yeah. Look on, on, on the side of your bed. What's over there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Well, I think some do. <laughs> yeah. I know. I think well, so. and for some folks that might be fine. You know, Vicki and I have talked about in other sessions that you really should read a book before, maybe even twice. And I've mm -hmm. read my books twice before. I've made sure I really want the group to read them. Right. Um, so again, we're use things on um, how, how maybe to do it well and how maybe to do it to bring your book club to an end. So yeah, don't be a helpful book club member, right? Because if you say no, the people who say yes are those people we were talking about earlier. You don't want to read their books anyway. So everything works <laughs> out. Yeah. Yay! Problem solved. <laughs> um, in your book group, other book groups, do you have folks who are uh, non-participatory in this way? Well, we had the the group where we never decided ahead of time who was going to choose. So that was really bad. So then it was, like I said, it was the the most dominant person there that day or the person who argued the strongest for their book and thought everybody else would like it. And it just wasn't a really great way to do it. I like it when everybody has a turn to do it because that way it spreads, it makes you feel more connected and more responsible. Mm -hmm. And so you're not always just kind of coasting and you know, you have to be involved and you have to think ahead and all that. So so I think it has some good good reasons. That does require you have one person in your group that keeps track. Right. Yes. I'm I'm a ba I'm very in favor of having a group leader. Yeah. And I know and some people think it's undemocratic, but I I'm all for that. So if you want that, you know, these are the models you will choose. And if you don't want that then by all means, loosey goosey is the way to go. But I do keep a spreadsheet, and I can see when we've read it, if it was a one book, one link in. Um, it was, anyway, that helps me sort of, as people come and go from book group, decide whose turn it might be. Again. Yeah. And then I do give people about three, four months notice. Yes. And say, okay, are you up? Are you, can you come up with some titles? Yeah. And some people will struggle with me and say, give me some time, and they'll say, not this time around. You skip over me. I'll do it another time. So be is that an option? 
<laughs> oh, 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 Poor Siri. I'm so, oh. I really need her. <laughs> um, oh, this will do it. Yeah. Um, you know, mm -hmm. let's say that you're picking a book. At, okay. Um, Freakonomics we read. Mm -hmm. And everybody's spouse read it. Yeah, they did. That's right. Everybody, now, mm -hmm. uh, Siri and I live in a building, and um, it's usually just one partner who belongs to the book club. It's never the both partners, which is interesting. But the night we read Freakonomics, the partner's came. series selection, again, <laughs> I just want to say, um, one partner came, another part. I think we had two, two, at least two, and we were sitting on the floor because I wasn't expecting right. those people to come, Right. but they had read it because their partner was talking to them about the book, right. and it was like, okay, I'll read it, I'll read it, yeah. and it was nonfiction, so we got um, a combo, and spouses. yeah, and that was an interesting night. I certainly wasn't prepared for it, but we it, it worked. It worked, but you know, people were sitting on the floor, which yeah, okay. I <laughs> rearranged my living room to try to deal with it. Yeah, but you know, uh, if you're meeting in a home, you only have room for really so many. Right, and that just unless you're meeting in a church hall or something, and that that goes to size of your group and your expectations about conversation. Mm -hmm. and do you want to have one or do you want to have several? So. Well, and there was a, a little difference in the sense that we knew the other people who were coming too. Right. They, we didn't know that you didn't know they were coming, but we right. knew them. The other thing about it is, you know, you can bring people nobody knows, right. and so then you're. It, it's just kind of the struggle of not only are there more people than you thought, but you don't know them, and you don't right. know their interests or their tastes, or right. they've never been in the book group before. And, but to fully clarify how to do this wrong, let's say we picked a book and I recommended it to Krista, who's not in my book, and I said, go ahead, just come and join us. And then I throw Krista into my very intimate group, and, mm -hmm. and she brings up friend of hers. Yeah, and you bring another friend. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's a book. good way to Did she, read the book. Yes. <laughs> yeah. To um, keep other potential new members out of your group, mm. that if you do this as a surprise and they feel completely uncomfortable because yes. they don't know the group, they don't know the book, they don't know how everything's supposed to go, then they'll never come back again. Yeah. That's true. You don't have to worry about developing your group or right. making a change or no chemistry you do, you know, or anything. Yeah. You'll totally make them feel uncomfortable, the people there will feel uncomfortable. Yeah, and really feeling uncomfortable is a good idea because yeah. then you're not really compelled to share your honest and true thoughts either. <laughs> so be uncomfortable with guests that aren't expected. Really? Um, now again, one of my sister's book groups keeps their group tight, and they will actually discuss what new member they're going to bring in, right? Because they want the chemistry to remain yeah, the first. Yeah. Yeah. And so, before if someone moves away, they'll actually discuss: should we fill mm -hmm. that spot, or should we leave it empty? So, you know, you might really go to the a serious amount of detail to decide mm -hmm. who belongs. Mm -hmm. So, guests, unexpected guests, that can really mm -hmm. throw things off for. A group that has worked hard to develop chemistry, and I would dare to say all of your groups really have a specific chemistry. Oh yeah, they definitely do, and one person can make a big difference. Yes. So the chemistry is more casual in some. The margarita mm -hmm. one, I imagine, is the most casual. Right. Is right. that come and go? Can you drop in? Can you bring friends to that? Yeah. No, I don't think anybody ever has, but the people who come, it's a kind of a moving group. I think there's ten in the group, and there's usually six or eight people at any... Right. Because you, people meeting. will have conflicts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, this is a good one, too. Some books only feel that long. <laughs> <laughs> I, was about to say. I loved that graphic. I yeah. Know, I don't know what that is, if it's a dissertation. I do, too. I... I feel like something's happened to book editing in the last 10 years that that books are not edited like they used to be and sort of, and I don't know if this has to do with the publishing industry or the, mm -hmm. the way writers are, yeah, anything, just keep putting stuff in there. And, and yeah, a well-edited book is a shorter book. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, there's a lot of times where you're reading and you're thinking, I'm really enjoying this, but like this whole part was completely unnecessary. Um, so yeah, long books, and those are hard because book group books tend to be books that you not wouldn't aren't necessarily ones you would choose to read. Right, so you're not right. going to be speeding through them. You're fitting it into the reading that right. you normally do. Right. And if it's a long book and you're meeting monthly, you may have a lot of people who won't finish, mm -hmm. who are irritated about that. I remember we at early in our book club we had someone select a book by Verhoeven Mystery. Mm -hmm. It was 
quite long, and she was very concerned about it. But everyone agreed to, okay, this is one we are, we're all agreeing to take on, and we know that it's longer, and we're all good with that. So we did. But our group also meets every other month, and so many groups really meet monthly. Right. So that's asking a lot of someone who's working, reading other books, taking care of family, all sorts of things, to deal with an 800-page book just because exactly. I really liked it. Even if you like it, yeah. Even if you like the book, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to finish it. And not being right. able to finish it is a big, a big problem. So bring a group to its knees by choosing things that are just ridiculously long. Yeah. yeah, 800 plus. Yeah. Go for that. Yeah. We've, we've touched on this, but I can't stress it enough. Um, if you don't send out vectors, <laughs> yeah. even though we meet every other month at the same time, it's hard to recall when it's going to be. <laughs> Siri sometimes reminds me what to <laughs> remind you. Send a reminder. She'll say, "No, book group is." <laughs> oh, 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 we have okay. we have an event it's at your house. Yeah, by the way. we yeah. have an event that meets on the Thursdays and yeah, Fridays, and so oh, we're planning something, and I'll say, "Oh, we can go on that Thursday." She's so like, we no, book, we're, "We're gonna, gonna have a bunch of people at your house. <laughs> it's not gonna work." But I, just I write things on a calendar way ahead. What can I say? In the real world, I try to send out an. an note about a week in advance, reminder, here's the book. And some people still haven't gotten a hold of the book, and it, for speed readers, it gives them enough time if they want to get out there and read it. They can, yeah. because it's 300-ish pages, and they, you know, they're all readers. So I've known people have, that's the note that's sent to the library to get it, and they'll read wow. it that weekend. If it was available. That would yeah. make me stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I never read this. But then I, so I, but I will also label my notes, keep this list, keep this list, right. here's your assignments, you know. Um, do what you can to make it easy, but um, if you change your time a lot, you know, and you should, move it all right. around, Mondays, Thursdays, right. Mondays. Cancel, reschedule. Right, right. Don't deal with people when you can. Say, so, never mind, we're going to go back to the original thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works. But if you do want to be mindful of that, you know, I send out notes about a week in advance and strongly label what they are, and if you're not going to be able, here's the next one, here's right. the next one. So if you're going to miss, you know what's ahead, and you can find your reading schedule and what you need to do. Do you do you get that on reminders? We do. We yeah. have a Facebook yeah. page, and then the other one, yeah, it's more uh, email. But so one group manages on a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Does that work well? Yeah, everybody is on the Facebook page. I mean, that's so it works. I mean, everybody is on Facebook, and they're pretty regular users. It just so happens that it okay. works. Nice. So yeah. there's no one. There's certainly not one model, right. right? For how you want to do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Be late. Very late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then ask what's already been talked about. <laughs> we we'll all want to do start <laughs> over. Every yeah, time. we want to start over. We've been talking about this for an hour, but hey. <laughs> I don't think we have anybody no. like that. We have early. <laughs> well, right. Once again, once again, the dinner preceding the, the discussion helps a lot with that because you have kind of a buffer time. You have a window of time to, to come in. <laughs> and you have motivation to come early because you want to eat all the delicious things. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who haven't, and I know we've explained this, but the book group that we're in at my, that meets at my house has a 6 to 7 o'clock dinner drink time. And then at 7 o'clock, we go to the living room, fill up your drink, and then we physically change locations to talk about the book. Otherwise, it's just chatter. What mm -hmm. movies did you see? We do our therapy. What else are you reading? Yeah, we do the therapy. Yeah, hour. what else are you reading? Yeah. Yeah. Off topic the whole hour. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, maybe in a, in a world where this you don't want this to be a problem, have a window of time where people can show up. Right. So it's not just a, we start at 7. Maybe you want to do something so people can arrive and slide in, as right. their work schedules and errands allow them to do. Yeah, I, I was in one that was like a Sunday afternoon group, and we tried to do kind of food and drink ahead of time, and then discussion, and people would come for the food and drink, and they'd be like, oh, i got to go pick up my daughter. Oh, people awesome. leave? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, my god. Is that group still wow. right? No, that group is not still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, killed. Yeah. It, it was killed. It was killed. That's what I was going to ask, actually, because you, you mentioned people come early, and I was wondering, would that be a way, too, to have a bad thing if somebody comes early? Right. Like you say, we start at 6, but they show up at 5, and you're not even ready at your house. 
I and have, then I have yeah, that. Yeah. Everyone yeah. shows up and is ready to talk. They say, "All right, well, I've been here for a couple hours. I gotta go." Right, and right. Maybe that just gives a really bad it. attitude to the whole towards yeah. the whole um, some event. People, some people have show up early reputations, and we have a few of those. Yeah. So yeah, but that can be frustrating for the hostess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and make you not want to host anymore. <laughs> there yeah. you go. No I quit. Host. Right. Yeah. Joe. <laughs> so, Kill the host. Kill the host. Then we can have a mystery. That's my job. Kill the book group and kill the host. Okay. Um, we we've, we've talked about this one. In some book groups, that's that's maybe a norm to show up and not be done with the book. Right. But again, those are your, those goes to your go to your expectations for the book club. Exactly. Is that acceptable? And we've made it a bit of a norm that it's people don't do that in ours. Right. You finish or you don't show. And if you haven't, the understanding is we are going to talk about the end. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't and you come, you know that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of up to you. There's no spoilers. It's all mm -hmm. game when you show up yep. for the conversation. We we actually was and then the, the my ex dead book group um, had a had a <laughs> had someone who wouldn't read it and come and listen to the discussion and then decide if she was going to read the book or not. <laughs> And that wow. that's a dead group. That's, that's a, a dead, dead group. group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I thought that was really clever. It's possible that we're helping to define that singular person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I think that might bring us to our next slide, maybe. Oh, I'm not. Oh, I'm not. I'm jumping ahead. Um, if someone selects a book and has gone to all the trouble to selecting it yeah. and they present it in the club, you should just hate it right away. Right before you read it, don't have an open mind. Right. Try to just shut that thing down and hurt their feelings. I think that might be good, too. How could you choose something like this? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a cardinal rule of book groups that you need to be open to other people's selections. Because if you just wanted to read what you want to read all the time, then why are you in a book group? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Again, those certain book groups are organized differently. We're yeah. going for a sort of a pure, we're going to read it and talk about it. But again, there's on the spectrum yeah. many different kinds of clubs. So. Yeah, um, but if you impose everything that's selected, eventually there will be no book to read, and you will have to move your book club successfully, <laughs> and you so. will be invited back. That's right. right. So problem solved. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> stay late. Stay really late. I mean, if you're meeting in someone's home, that's a really good idea. Especially if it's a work day. It's yeah, 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 yeah. And um, don't offer to do anything, and just keep talk, 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 talk. And so, yeah, <laughs> that's, that. a, that's a very good idea. <laughs> um, and usually a group kind of sets up its pace, right? You know, um, maybe you'll feel. I don't know. Do your other clubs kind of have a pace to a wind down? Yeah, fine. you feel it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And people's attention spans are wired for about mm -hmm. an hour. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you jump over that hump and go another hour. Right. And people are in the groove again. It depends on the book. It does have. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I can tell when you're in a sweet spot. Stay there. Yeah. Right. But stay beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and this is more for killing the host. Yeah, <laughs> toxic. Book kind of and thing. so I think this whole session might be yeah, we really summed up well. Um, yeah. We're describing that one person who will come to your book group and just make a mess of it mm -hmm. by the behaviors and attributes we've described. Mm -hmm. We've all had them, mm -hmm. and they're either and we're not in those groups anymore. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes they stay and you go, and sometimes they go and you stay. Yeah, it varies a lot. So I, if we, if you don't know what a toxic book club member is by now, I don't know how much I did. Much clearer, clearly. Over and over. Um, uh, being, yes. being overly judgmental. Yeah, this drove me from my other book group. And just if you want to send people away, just tell them flat out they're wrong. As a matter of fact, interrupt them partway through their opinion. And tell them they're wrong. Just say you are wrong. Yeah. You know, everybody loves to hear that. <laughs> yeah, there, this was in one of my book groups, but I heard of one that some of my friends were in that imploded really badly over this exact thing where somebody just said, You're wrong. Yeah. You couldn't be more wrong than you are wrong. And the whole <laughs> book group just. Well, it's, again, just shut like down. It's like a small country, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like some people went here and some people went here and they just. Couldn't stay together anymore. So, well, and we're a result of some of those things that have mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, so we speak from experience. Yeah, absolutely. This is something I was thinking about the earlier slide about um, 
say right off the bat what you think about the book, mm -hmm. right at the beginning of the night, say right. it was horrible. And because I think you could add to that, and I'm glad you had this, like, it was horrible, and if any of you guys think differently, you're wrong. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you that's your perfect sense. <laughs> that is the mantra of the toxic book. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Make sure your body language shows that yeah. you mean it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, we're, and so, oh. here we are at the end. We want to wish you a really happy April <laughs> We hope that you don't want to kill your book group. Oh, I've given yeah. you a URL for the resources that we offer here at the Library Commission. If you are a librarian in Nebraska, we have resources and book club kits. So actually multiple copies of titles, over 900 now that you might want to pick from, mm -hmm. all the way from young adult, young reader, up to adult. All sorts of titles, fiction, nonfiction, genre, literary fiction, all sorts of things. So. Um, if you're ready to jump into this murky pool with us and make your definitions of what you'd like in a book group, we would certainly support that. Um, but thanks for playing with us. Any last parting words you want to say? Well, I was wondering if anybody had any questions. Yes. So Were there any questions? A bit um, time. Let's see. Does anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts, um, your own ideas on how you killed book clubs? <laughs> Experiences to share, you know, we've some therapy, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have any ideas or any comments, uh, you can use the questions section and you go to a yeah, go to webinar interface, type that in there. Um, during, no, we didn't have anything except for that first rule of uh, book club comments, right? That's so, cool. Well, and I, I think one of the things that you have to realize is like any relationships, book clubs have a dynamic to them and they, um, yeah, there's definitely chemistry. And when you're in and when you're in a groove and you've got a great group going, it just feels good for everybody, I think. Mm -hmm. And so um, messing with that it is it's not good. And so I think a big part of that is having well-defined expectations and ideas about what every if everybody's got to be kind of on the same page, no pun intended, yeah. about <laughs> what what they want out of the book group, and they're going to be a lot happier. Some people might be really unhappy in our book group, for instance, because they would think we're way too serious about talking about. And we need to lighten up and talk about other things. So, you know, it just depends on what kind of a reader you are and what and your we, expectations are. We have had some people leave. Yeah, there's some geographically, some have just left the group. Yeah. And I'm fully aware why. Yeah, that's fine. I think we were too serious. You might have found something mm -hmm. else. Yeah, so if you're wanting to join a book group, <laughs> start one. Try it out. Yeah, maybe your sure. book group before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> prenuptial. <laughs> and when I had that bad experience, I didn't join a book group for a long time. So I think the the mm -hmm. that too is just know them. that they're not all the same, and that you have to find one where you fit in, and they and they feel like they you fit in. So yeah, yeah. don't give up. Yeah. Okay. Any questions that came? Um, no, just saying I enjoyed this and um, the suggestion to that you should take these key anti-success points and make it into a cool infographic. One of those. Oh, nice. <laughs> all right. We have a PowerPoint slide. So we'll use that. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us. Good luck to you all <laughs> <laughs> in whatever you're trying to accomplish. <laughs> whatever you're trying to Which whatever way you're going. Whichever That's way. Right. Do it with gusto and thanks. Do it in. Cool. Well, thank you very, thank you very much, guys. That was great. Um, lots, learned lots of great things about book clubs. And <laughs> and you book club no, I am not. Um, <laughs> and after this, she's not. Yeah, going well, to. My mom and my sister both do it. I, I, I've never tried one before. Um, it's just it's felt like not my thing. Um, I was an English major in college. Did a lot of reading, a lot of book analyzing and reviewing stuff because it was what I did for college. Yeah, and. Um, and I know, like I said, different groups are differently are different, but I just get the feel that it would be more um, like work, like mm -hmm. school. Like I, I have to read the book, and I have to have something interesting to say oh, about it, um, and I have to learn from what other people think about it. And generally, I don't feel like that. I feel like I want to read it, and I enjoyed it. Cool. On to the next one. Right. I don't want to. You know, somebody say this was really cool here to like my mm -hmm. fans here read this one or my sister. Hey, I found something I thought you might think was cool. But that's about as far as it goes. I just yeah. don't feel like I would get into sitting around and talking about it because it would feel like my college years. When I, had I think that's that. typical. Yeah. I think that's a really typical opinion and probably the more the majority. Yeah. Don't so, you? No, agree? not me. Really? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I want to talk about everything. But, <laughs> but no, I get done reading a book and I'm like, who's read this book? Who will talk but if you were to line up all your friends, how many are in a book group and how many are not? Not that many. 
That's yeah, my that's point. Yeah, that's my you're point. Right. You're right. You're extrovert, extrovert, extrovert. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go. Yeah, because extroverts process by talking about things. It's the same when I've seen a movie and I've got to find somebody who right. saw that movie. So, mm -hmm. that I can... so now we're using this as a therapy. Yeah. <laughs> For us, example, in, you know, all of our new tips in, in the process here. You know, in well, after I saw that, that Scientology movie on HBO the other night, I, I actually watched it with a group of people, which was great, because then we had time to oh. um, decompress <laughs> afterwards. After the crazy thing. Yeah. Did you see it? No, I have not. I've heard a lot about it. I don't have HBO. Oh, I watched it with friends who had HBO, and several of us were there, and it was really great to have people. To, if I would have watched it at home by myself, like on PBS, I would have been just like, <laughs> somebody to oh. talk to about this. And then I've continued and had many conversations with people since then. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot online, but yeah, definitely, yeah, that people are just going, oh my. And that other one, um, The Jinx. Oh, yeah, that's, that's another that's one that everybody wants. <gasps> you have to watch the crazy in this. It's yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, we're going to wrap up. And yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that will. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We're still going. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. <laughs> Oops. Uh, happy April Fool's Day. Hope you have a nice rest of your day um, with whatever may or may not come mm -hmm. your way. Um, that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. We are recording it. It will be available on our website later this afternoon if you want to come and watch it again. Enjoy it. <laughs> um, and this is where our website, all the recordings go on here. Down here is our archives underneath our upcoming shows. And we post um, the recording. Let's see if I have here. Yeah. Um, PowerPoint slides will be posted as well and any links related. So I will have links to what uh, the link that the URL had there of the resources we have in the Library Commission website will be available Great. as well for you to quickly jump to those. Um, so that wraps up for this week. I hope you join us next week when, oh, I was actually talking about this before, um, our annual summer reading program session. Sally Snyder, our um, coordinator of children and young adult library services, every year she comes on and talks about all the new books for whatever the summer reading program theme is. And that's our show next week. Um, every hero has a story. It's like superheroes, which I think is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be really fun. So sign up and join us um, for that next week or for any of our other um, shows that you see here on the schedule. Also, if you are a Facebook user, as you were saying, um, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. Um, not a lot of discussion goes on there, but that's where we post notifications of new shows. Um, the recordings are available every week, a on the fly here, so you can just log in if you didn't get registered ahead of time to remind you that the show is coming up. So if you are big on Facebook, do definitely go over there and then like us. Other than that, we are good to go for today. Thank you very much. Bye. We'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye bye.